Yeah, g'day, it's Charlie ZL2 CTM. Well, I just want to do a, a quick video today looking at the double balance mixes that I've made for this radio. Um, you'll recall at the very beginning I said that I wasn't going to use some of these exotic parts, for example, uh, the SBL1 here, but instead try and homebrew up um, some trans or homebrew up a mix more the point using some more readily available parts. Now, what I've elected to do for this circuit here is just a, uh, the standard. Uh, double balance mixer setup, um, a diode ring here. I've elected to use um, shot key diodes, uh, just ones that I could easily get hold of here. So 1N5711s uh, uh, for those. Um, and uh, as you can see here, um, a couple of FT37 43s uh, cores uh, with 10 turns trifler of uh, number 28 wire uh, configured, as you can see here, with the, with the dots for the, the phasing. Now, you can see here on the left hand side, I've got a little 100 ohm trim pot there. Um, ordinarily on, for example, the SBL1, uh, this centre tap here would go directly to earth. Uh, but, ha but having this little 100 ohm pot here, I can um, just balance up the circuit to uh, try and get the best uh, attenuation of the, um, the unwanted products and the DC and the like um, using that little trim pot, which you'll see on the scope. Um, yeah, so that's all I want to do there. Just uh, f like I say, using the 5711s, um, they have from the spec sheet uh, at 1 milliamp a, a forward voltage of maximum 0.41. Um, and after this part of the um, movie here, I'll just uh, break through to how I selected those diodes, um, and then I'll come back and we'll have a quick look at uh, what I've done to, to tune this up. So let's just break here. And I will go through and just show what I did to um, try and match these diodes uh, to get them as close as possible in terms of the forward voltage drop. So let me just pause there and we'll come back. Okay, um, I'm set up now to try and characterize these diodes. Now the approach I'm going to take um, from the spec sheet, uh, the 1N5711, the diode here, at 1 milliamps through it, is supposed to have a maximum voltage of 0.41. So what I've decided to do, um, I'm just going to set a circuit up to um, have one milliamp going through it, and then I'm going to have a voltmeter sitting across that diode measuring it, uh, and then I will look to um, divide out or to pass out the various um, values to try and get four. Um, in fact, I need two lots of four because I'm making two double balance mixes uh, to be within one millivolt. Um, variation, and I'll talk about that in a sec. So in terms of the circuit itself, um, very simple, uh, just using a variable DC um, um, power supply over here, passing through a 4.7k ohm resistor, so that's going to be approximately 4.7 volts. So 4.7 volts divided by our 4.7k uh, ohms comes out to be 1 milliamps. Um, I have got, uh, strictly speaking, I've actually got an additional uh, 10 ohms there, which I'm just measuring the voltage across. Uh, that I can work out what the current's going to be. So 1 milliamp times uh, 10 ohms comes out at 10 uh, millivolts. So that's what I'll be measuring on this uh, meter over here. Uh, for a higher current circuit, I'd, I'd make that uh, 0.1 ohms to measure my current. Uh, and the reason why I've been doing this more recently is um, I've actually uh, blown the fuse in the, the current side of my meters um, once or twice, which is a real pain. So just to keep things nice and simple, um, I measure current through a circuit by putting in a, a low value um, resistor. Like I say, for, for the higher current circuits, in order not to get a huge voltage drop, um, I use 0.1 ohms. But for this particular circuit, I'm going to be adjusting this power here, or the voltage I should say, uh, in order to get through the circuit as a whole uh, as close as I can to 1 milliamp in order to try and get a consistent reading across that um, that diode there. So, um, as I just mentioned, um, my uh, my aim is to try and get uh, two lots of four uh, diodes within one millivolts. Um, I'm going to use the uh, the millivolt setting on the right hand scale there, and as you can see, uh, I'm actually got four digits to play with. Now, it's going to be this digit here that I wanted to get within one, but because I've got to play around with an additional uh, digit here acknowledging the inaccuracies or the accuracy um, of these meters here, all things being equal, I'm going to see how close I can to matching 
um, this value here, or in fact it'll be the last, the last two and you'll see that in a sec. Um, and that's what I'll try to depict here. Even though I'm aiming for this one, I'm actually going to see if I can uh, go one level down. So, in that particular case, um, that reading at one milliamp, so I've got uh, 10 millivolts across that 10 ohm resistor, um, that's uh, constant, gives me, uh, in this particular case, 0.3663 volts. Um, and then I've, what I've then done, and hopefully I won't move the camera too much, let me just come down here, I've then got a bit of paper where I've, let me just move this forward just a tad, uh, where I've written down just the last two digits of that meter reading, so ranging from 3647 up here down to 3693, so just jotting down the 93 to save some space. Uh, in that particular case, that one we just measured, which was 3663, uh, would go into that pile um, here, 3663. Now, um, setting that one aside, uh, we can see that of the 50, or across the 50 diodes that I purchased, um, We've got a few groupings. We've got one grouping of uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 here, and a couple of groupings of 3, uh, including that, that one over there, which I might as well just add in now. So, let me just drop that there. So I don't have, off the cuff, um, two lots of 4, but I think down here what I'll do, uh, between these two, which I've sort of drawn this line around the, the 7, 0 and the 7, 1, I can uh, take one of those across to the 7, 0 pile, um, which is still within my one millivolt difference, and now I have um, two lots of um, two lots of four, so one or four for each um, for each double balance mixer, if that makes sense. So um, that's what I'll go with. So I'll break here. I'll build up the um, the rest of the uh, double balance mixers uh, and do a two few tests, and we'll go from there. Anyway, right or wrong, that's the approach I've taken for trying to um, characterise the, the forward voltage drop for the diodes in order to get um, a matching set of four, uh, acknowledging uh, the, the accuracies or inaccuracies of, uh, of the meters and any variances there. Okay, back soon. Okay, we're back again. Um, through the magic of video editing, I've uh, made up the two um, mixers here. We saw from the, uh, the beginning of the video. Uh, using those two sets of four, as much as, as, much as I could, uh, diodes just uh, uh, prior to this. Right, so um, in terms of the frequencies, before I um, bring up the scope, uh, I've got an IF on this radio going to be 9 megahertz. So I need to mix, in terms of this mixer here, my incoming RF of 3.7 megs uh, with a local oscillator to produce that IF. So that local oscillator can either be uh, on the, the low side of the IF, so say 5.3 megahertz, so 5.3 plus 3.7 equals 9, or it can be on the high side of the IF. In that particular case it would be 9 megahertz plus 3.7 uh, equals 12.7. Um, the disadvantage, or one of the disadvantages of using uh, a local oscillator of 5.3 megs in this particular case is it's actually quite close to the pass band of uh, the 80 meter band. For the 80 meter band's up to 3.9, so there's not a huge amount of difference there trying to uh, uh, keep that local oscillator out from the front end of the radio depending on, on um, how tight the band pass filter is for that, that band there. Whereas if I use a local oscillator of 12.7 megs here then um, I've got several megs uh, from the stop band through to uh, that frequency there. Anyway, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to, I'm not quite sure the best way of actually showing how this is going to work, so right or wrong, um, I'll just do a little bit of a, a, a demo according to me. I totally apologize if that's uh, not the correct way of doing business here. But um, honestly, you know, I'm sort of just learning here, and this is the way it's going to be. So, anyway, so what I have here on the uh, on the right hand side, I've got the SIGGEN set up. Um, I have two channels here. Uh, on channel uh, one is 3.7 megs, just notionally at 300 millivolts peak to peak. So that's just simulating my RF that's coming in um, uh, from the antenna. And on channel two, I've got at the moment. I've set up with that lower frequency, so I've got a local oscillator of 5.3 megahertz, 
at 1.416 volts peak to peak. So the SBL1 which I'm trying to emulate down here uh, is a 7 dBm mixer. Uh, so the uh, RF, say again the local oscillator drive for that uh, being 7 dBm is, equates to approximately 1.416 volts peak to peak. So that's what I've um, selected here for the, um, the yellow drive. Um, what I'll do, uh, now you'll recall that I had that little trim pot there for, for trimming things out. So at the moment I'm just scoping the output of the, um, of the mixer. So that's the low, say again, the intermediate frequency output. And I've just zoomed right up. So if I just get my, um, my uh, screwdriver here, and if I was just to slightly adjust that trim pot, you can sort of see how it goes out of balance. So I'm going to rotate that till I get as close as possible to about there somewhere. So as best as I can tell, that's as balanced as I can uh, I can make it. Just going to um, flick on the, the radio here, just loosely coupled through. That's tuned to 9 megs. Um, and if we were now we're on the zero beat because we're spot on um, 5.3 megs, if I was just to increase that just a little bit, we'll go down, doesn't really matter. We can start to see our tone coming through. So that's so that's good. So we are actually mixing and we are actually producing uh, a 9 megs intermediate frequency um, as expected. Um, so that was 5.3 uh, megs as one of the options. The other one I said was 12.7. Uh, so let's just go back up to there, so that's 10, 11, 12, up to uh, 7, and again we'll just tune off because at the moment we're zero beating, so I've got the radio on CW mode, and we can see it coming through there. So once again, the, 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 the other option of the local oscillator, in this case minus our RF or 3.7 megs, uh, equals 9 megs. So um, the only other thing I, uh, let me just turn it off so I'm not making such a big noise there. The only other thing I've, uh, I've, I've, I've wired up down here just is a bit of a compare and contrast, I guess, with an SBL1. So I've got a, double, a couple of double pole, double throw switches here. I only need one pole, so I'm just um, switching uh, between the two mixers here, the homebrew mixer and the commercial SBL1, uh, the, uh, the scope, um, and the incoming, which is the IF uh, coming out. Uh, switching the uh, local oscillator coming in and our RF coming in. So, in no particular order, what we have up there is uh, the uh, homebrew mixer. And if I was now just to switch over to the SBL1, um, we can see a, a slightly increased amplitude. Uh, my quick and a quick calculator was about 1.8 uh, dB difference. So uh, the homebrew mixer has got slightly. Uh, my assumption will be um, because it is a homebrew mixer using sort of uh, probably not the the best parts in the world and the construction uh, about 1.9 additional insertion loss for that. Um, but hey, it's a heck of a lot cheaper than than, than buying the uh, the commercial option here. So I'm going to stick with that. Um, I, I don't really know, apart from potentially going to uh, get uh, bigger and better um, diodes or anything else, um, how I can make that any better. And at the end of the day, you know, if I get a little bit more insertion loss using this, then uh, we can make that up through some additional gain on the IF amps. So I'm not overly concerned about that. Uh, what I was more concerned about was just make sure I had a nice, good balance, um, just to make sure there wasn't any DC component coming through uh, and the like. So uh, I think that was a bit of a, a bit of a ramble, and I apologise for that. Um, and I apologise that uh, I I didn't do you know port isolation and the like. Um, that's just that's just the way it is, I'm afraid. So plan now is to make up the two uh, IF amplifiers. Uh, my my current thinking is from a uh, a biasing point of view, um, I'm just going to make those exactly the same, um, and then we can start. Or well, I can start putting that together and come up with a uh, with a receiver just to see how things are performing. So that's the next task. I'll get on with that now, and I'll put a video up, and we will shall go from there. Okay, cheers all.